Reason one why you should watch Guns Akimbo. <laughs> That scene encapsulates the essence of this movie. It's grimy, it's unexpectedly funny. Without me, you would be nothing. I mean, look at you. You look like someone tried to paint a worn out dildo with a fucking Sharpie. Ah, oh, that hurts. And also the female sidekick isn't some immortal Mary Sue or just some insert love interest for the male lead. She's actually the most interesting character in the story. But I guess her face doesn't quite sell tickets like Harry Potter's does. His recognisable face is the reason I clicked on this movie on Amazon Prime. And it's the reason why you clicked on this video. Well, that and you love my incredible content, of course. Speaking of which, here's what happens in Guns Akimbo. The movie opens with a pixelated Joker wannabe telling us how morbidly corrupt the internet is. You click on horrific news headlines, violence, destruction, terrorism, war. Because it makes your shitty little lives seem that little bit less shitty. In this movie's world, there exists an online streaming show called Schism, where people sign up to kill each other while the whole world watches. And I could see this being a thing that exists. We already take pleasure in watching people practically kill each other in a ring. Why not take it to the next level? I'd watch a shotgun wielding Conor McGregor chasing down Bonesaw from Spider-Man. Hey, freak show! You're going nowhere! My knowledge of current fighters isn't great. We're introduced to Daniel Radcliffe's character, Miles Harris, but I'm gonna call him Harry Popper because I'm a creative genius. Harry Popper is a lonesome nobody who works as a coder for a terrible mobile game under an equally terrible boss. Not interrupting, am I? No, 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 just, uh, just checking some stuff. Hey, uh, can you sign this going away card? Uh, wait, what, what is this? We're currently downsizing personnel. What, by how many? Just one. They relax, hombre. It's a joke! But if I catch you jerking around again, next card will be real. I like this guy. Harry Popper lets off some steam that evening by trolling people on a schism stream. But like all high level IQ trolls, he didn't know when to quit and got the attention of the schism admin, who quickly traces his IP address. Now I've done my fair share of smack talk to motherfuckers online, and that's why I'm blocked on Pope Francis's Twitter. So I've experienced this fear that one day my trolling could land me in a situation very similar to this. Harry Popper faces his consequences when some schism people who are dressed like Mad Max Fury Road burst into his room. Well there he is, the big man. You scared yet? This guy here is the main villain. I forgot what his name is, but he looks like the underside of a school desk. So I'm naming him Bubblegum. They knock Harry unconscious and he awakes to find his hands have been surgically attached to two pistols. So he freaks out like a little bitch. Fun factoid, gunshots are way louder than in the movies. He finds out his opponent's name is Nix, whose name I'm not going to change because that's British slang for knickers. And also I'm fairly sure she would kick my ass and stomp on my balls for the insult. God, I hope she steps on my balls. Harry attempts to negotiate with Nix, but her edgy tattoo should be a sign that she doesn't play nice. The people commenting on the live stream aren't too happy about Harry running away and hiding from Nix, and the people in the Schism studios are arguing about what to do. The comments are flying in because no one has died yet, and the director's freaking out too. Just let me do my thing, okay? You do yours. Stand around looking like end-level bosses from Streets of Rage. Oh my god. That's a really good comparison. That's so much funnier than my comparison to Mad Max. Well played writer and director Jason Lee Holden, who also directed Deathgasm. You know those lyrics about hell, demons and doom? What if I told you it's all real? I know. I was there. 
Oh my god, I really need to see this. When Harry crawls out of the dumpster, he meets this homeless gentleman who helps him get dressed. He's not at all important to the plot, but I absolutely needed to show you this scene of him giving Harry a hot dog. Oh, so close. That's still, you know, 10 second rule. Yep. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Watching this hot dog roll around on the disgusting ground next to a sopping wet condom is one of the most horrific scenes I've ever seen. I, I, I think I love you, Jason Lee Holden. Harry attempts to get help from his friend at work when his boss spots him and gives him some grief for being late. So it's 4pm and you come in looking like complete shit. Harry decides that this fairly reasonable grievance is one push too many and finally grows some balls. But before he gets the chance to kill him, Nyx crashes the party. But Harry manages to scurry away once more and we enter a car chase scene. And that's how they both died. They're absolutely dead. There's no way anyone's coming back from. Oh. 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 Oh, did I win? Oh. Oh, no. Undertaker steps up. This chase sequence leads to an old building where Harry Popper discovers Nyx has PTSD around explosions. This is just one of the reasons why I labelled Nyx as the most interesting character in this movie. I give way more of a crap about her story than Harry Popper's. What's his story other than the guns thing? He's a loser and he's trying to date some girl and she's only in this movie to get kidnapped for ransom later. Oh, that's interesting, I guess. To further illustrate this point, we hear the story of how Nick survived the explosion, but her mum and brother weren't so lucky. And now her police detective father is trying to put a stop to her before she ends up being killed. Harry, after hearing this backstory, sets up a plan with Nyx to take out Schism. They pretend that Nyx kills Harry so his body can be Trojan horsed into the Schism HQ. Cleanup squad and my spotty. To me, it doesn't make much sense why Schism would go to all of that trouble cleaning up. It's not like they're trying to be secretive about their operation, so why would they hide the evidence? But whatever, they've managed to sneak in. In this penultimate showdown, we get some legitimately great fight scenes. And for me, the shining aspect isn't the choreography, it's the graphic blows. I never thought I would see Samara Weaving go from looking like this to this. She gets a hammer to the face multiple times. Stop! Hammer time! She gets her fingers sliced off and we get the funniest joke in this movie. Ugh, Friday night just got really lonely! For the younger audience listening, you may not understand what she meant by this. You see, Friday nights for Nyx were poker nights, but now with her missing card-holding fingers, she can no longer play poker, and that, that's why she's so lonely. Nyx as a character is so beat up and mentally scarred at this point, there's just no going back for her. Even her detective dad is now dead, so there's no one left to save her. The only way this character's story could end happy is with a poetically explosive sacrifice. Harry makes his way to the roof for the final showdown with Bubblegum, and he tries to convince Harry that without Schism, he would have continued to live a boring, meaningless life, where no one would know who he was. But now, everyone in this community knows the name Guns Akimbo. When Harry realises that he still needs to save his girlfriend, he powers through several gunshots to drop Bubblegum from the roof. <laughs> This is the perfect moment for Harry Popper to die. He's demonstrated what a badass he is with standing all of those lethal gunshot wounds. He became the hero of this story in his own blaze of glory. And so now the day is done. 
the movie is over. Oh, no, wait, the movie decided he's uh, he, he's still alive somehow. Oh, man, I really liked this movie, but what a bullshit ending that was. Well, I'm going to go watch Deathgasm now. I'll catch you guys later.